Hello, hello everyone, and welcome, welcome. Happy Thursday to you, and it's October 1st. Can you believe that? It's very hard to believe it's October 1st already. Getting ready for all that kind of spooky stuff going on in October. So let me introduce myself a little bit. My name is Alex Cooper. I teach the computer classes at the Columbia County Library in Evans, the Harlem Library, Uchi Creek, now Grovetown Library. Yay, we have a new uh, library building in Grovetown. Yay. And of course, we're not doing any on-ground classes right now. We're not having any kind of in-house programs. We're doing all our stuff virtually and stuff. So welcome, welcome. And this is our library resources and apps class. Um, one of the things we're going to cover is lots of free stuff from the library. We'll talk about ebooks, audiobooks, the new Libby app that you'll need to download to start accessing that. Excuse me. We'll talk about legal forms, Acorn TV, Galileo, library apps, and many other resources that our library has to provide. So, with that, let's go ahead and start talking about it. Some folks come into the come into our classroom a little bit. So the big question I usually ask everybody is, um, how can I help? Okay, so what questions do you have? Definitely feel free to post any kind of message. Feel free to post any questions into the chat. There we go. Now you can see my shoulders. Oh, look, I have shoulders. Uh, feel free to post any questions you have into the chat. The big question I usually ask is, how can I help? Okay, what questions do you have? What do you need that is, needs to be answered? Just let me know, okay? We're gonna talk about some of our classes we had this week. So on Tuesday, we did our photography, printing, and virtual scrapbooking class. That class is still up and available. That is kind of like part four to our library photography series. We also did yesterday morning cutting the cable, the basics of cord cutting. All these videos are still available here on our YouTube channel. And also, yesterday afternoon, we did creating videos and editing basics, okay? This morning, we had a really good time. We did the Raspberry Pi projects with Alex class. That is still up and available. And we made, we coded uh, two LED lights to look like they're breathing, turning on slowly and turning off. So we wired those up and stuff. And that video is still up and available too. Uh, so this is our classes for the last month of September. All these classes are still up and available. We're going to have our new schedule posted soon. Uh, today is our last class for um, this week, and we'll start back on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week for October. We've got some spooky classes planned, maybe making like a spooky card using Scratch and some other things we might do. So our previous classes are still up and available talking about Word, Excel, PowerPoint, the photography basics, fun, photography fundamentals, and cloud backup and advanced photo editing and layers, which is a fantastic class because that's kind of like a new class, okay? On a little bit of a side note, our libraries are open with limited service and hours. Curbside Holds Pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details or call into the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m., to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Right now we're having a, I guess you could say a subscription-a-thon. So please go to, um, on this channel, hit uh, log, make sure that you're logged into YouTube. You do need to be logged into YouTube to be able to like, subscribe, and ask questions as well. But hit subscribe. If we get 100 subscribers, that means that we'll get our own private well, our own, uh, not private, but our own uh, personalized uh, address on YouTube. Uh, the easiest way to find our channel currently is just searching YouTube for GCHRL uh, videos, and then you can find us that way. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get started. Very glad that you're here today, and I will go ahead and pull up our handout here. So welcome, welcome to class. <laughs> Very glad that you're here today, okay? 
So we have a little bit of an update with this. We'll talk about Libby a little bit, and I've got a little video to show about Libby as well. So if you haven't downloaded that for the audiobooks, we're going to talk about that. We're also going to pull up their website and give a little bit more information. I'll tell you my personal experience with it so far has been very positive. So I'll talk about how to log in, how to get that working and everything. So hopefully that's going to be helpful. Hey, Jan, welcome, welcome. Oh, absolutely. We're going to talk about that. Also, you can still check out Acorn just like you have using the RB Digital app. Okay. So no changes with the, the magazines, the comics, or, or getting Acorn or the Indie Flicks or also the, 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 it's the other service, the music service on there. We're going to talk about that uh, through the RB Digital. Okay. So I'm going to disappear so I'm not blocking the screen. So let's talk about what we're going to cover in our class. Okay. We're going to talk about what you need. We'll talk about our Pines app and all our stuff, of course, we're going to be talking about today is free. <laughs> so we're going to talk about what you need, Pines app, uh, putting books on hold, renewing books, uh, no late fee, of course. Uh, listing our overdue books with our fees and talking about our digital uh, library card as well. We'll talk about law stuff, different forms, and then we'll talk about RB Digital and we'll also be talking about the new Libby app. Okay, so I'll kind of talk about that as well. We'll talk about ebooks, e audiobooks, magazines, comics, getting Acorn TV, uh, video lessons to play. Um, uh, on instruments, how to access that, Galileo, that resource, Galileo Kids, K-12, homework help, and we'll talk about continuing education programs like universal class, credit, CEUs, and then learning a new language using Mango, and then we'll talk about little known gchrl.org resources that maybe you don't know about, okay? And then I'll list a bunch of different references. So before we get started, does anybody have any questions? Yes, Jane, absolutely. I love the Acorn TV uh, too. That's a fantastic um, thing to use. And I'll be showing a little bit of a trailer for that as well. All right, so definitely feel free to post questions at any time. One of the big things is if you are watching this in a rebroadcast, thank you for watching. But also realize if you watch our videos live, that means that you can ask me questions and I'm happy to answer them in any way that I can. All right, get ready. Animations. Ooh, here it flies in our library card. There you go. Woo. So what do you need? The big thing is, of course, you need your library card, don't you? You can access all this information that we're going to be talking about today by going to gchrl.org and then clicking the menu button. It'll drop down and everything I talk about is in there, I promise. <laughs> you may have to kind of think about, well, does that need to be under? digital library or something? Yes, it can. Now, one big thing that may occur is that, especially with like if this is the fir your first time learning anything about this, you do need your library card. You need to set up a username and password at gchrl.org, okay? And then you can access our, our other things, but do realize some of the other things, even like RB Digital, um, it may actually ask you to set up a username and password, okay? The best thing to do is actually keep that the same. And also the best thing to do is to use our website, gchrl.org, as a gateway to get you into the programs. Anything I talk about today, like the law service or anything like that, don't go there directly. Go click through our website to be able to access that stuff for free, okay? So first, let's talk about our Pines app. Now, you can access this by doing gapines.org, okay? But with the app, it makes it a lot easier to use. Again, you have to have set up, of course, you've already had to have a, a library card. You have to have set up your username and password on the gchrl.org website. And then you can access uh, the app on your phone or any of your other devices, okay? So first, let's start talking about our search. So if I pull up the Pines app and I do search, not only will it show me 
books that are available. It'll also start talking about ebooks and also it'll talk about CD audiobooks that I can check out from the library as well. So not only does it just show books, but it also shows some of our other resources or different types of media that we have as well. Okay. Now if we go down to where it says the items checked out, if we actually click that, it'll actually talk, well, I have that about, anyway, it'll, it'll actually show you where your items that you have checked out. Uh, one thing is a lot of the items you can actually, if it'll, it'll give you reminders if you have the app installed and have notifications set up, it'll actually pop up and say, hey, I uh, just want you to realize that you have that book that's due tomorrow. And then if you can, you can actually recheck it out using the app if it says you can do that, okay? So not only can the items check out, can you recheck out books longer? Um, there's a limit on that, I won't go into that, but the app will let you know, okay? What about putting books on hold? Now, right now our hold system's a little bit different, um, so you'll have to really need to call into the library and see which library is doing what program, but you can go to gchrl.org, like I said, for the book holds pickup, and fill out the information there um, to put the book on hold and, and, and pull up and then the li one of the librarians will bring out um, a, your book to your car. Definitely thank them for that. It's a wonderful program. It's a wonderful service. Okay, They're working very hard to do that. What about fines? Well, it also lists fines. Now, the whole, the, the items checked out and of course fines can help a lot because you may have checked out something. Maybe you have um, using you know one library card is kind of like a family library card. That's fine. Do you realize sometimes that um, little bits would check out books and then they may not remember to take the right book back. So with this, you can instantly type there, see what books you have checked out, and also before you get there, you click finds and you'll already know if you owe anything. Okay, um, because of uh, COVID. Some of our books, it takes longer to check in. If you do have any questions on that, contact us using the Facebook um, website, or you can actually, of course, call in and ask questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. as well. Now, uh, the, yeah, so the other part here is that we actually have where it says show card. You can tap that, and then boom, you can show your library card, okay? So what's the big deal with being able to show your library card? Well, the big deal with that is what if somebody, what if you forgot your library card? It's really great to have the one on your keys or not, but this one actually allows you to pick it up. It's right there, tap it, and the machines do allow you to read it as well. So let's go ahead and let's talk about Law Depot a little bit. LawDepot.com is the actual resource. Again, this is one of those where need to be logged into gchrl.org. Uh, click the links from our website to get to Law Depot and it'll let you sign right in. Now, I personally have helped a patron be able to get uh, one of the wills is what they really wanted. Makes, make, you can make it very specific. It's like a form that you fill out and then it'll actually we'll create a will to be basically uh, specific or, or to you, okay? So you fill out all the information. The big one is last will and testament is who gets your stuff okay so if there's certain things that you want people to get go ahead and you can make a list there it also will talk about who you want to be in charge of making sure everybody gets the stuff that they were supposed to do okay or get what is the living will living wills in case you're incapacitated and cannot speak what your wishes are um, like if you're in the hospital or something like that but it's an important document so let's talk about bill of sale, okay? Bill of sale, I know uh, we're not supposed to handshake, but you can still do a virtual handshake uh, when selling somebody something, but if it's big enough, like a car or whatever, you really should give them a bill of sale, okay? So this way that you can make one up, they have some pre-made ones, very easy to do. Another one is child medical consent forms. Um, if one of the schools needs that, um, there you go. You can pull that up. It is right on their website. The reason I talk about these four is because preparing for this class, I asked a lot, a lot, a lot of the librarians. Um, basically, what are people asking about for legal stuff? 
And that's kind of the main four ones that people ask about. Now, let's talk about if you need a notary. So let's say you did like a last will and testament, some other kind of document, and you need it to be notarized. Well, you have to talk to, now, because we're trying to stay safe and everything, you may have to discuss that with the librarians, what's the safest way to do this. But there are notaries that are available at the Evans Library and the Grovetown Library. And do realize that a lot of the banks will do that, like your bank would notarize a document as well. Big thing is some of these you have to have a witness as well. And we've had one of the librarians or two, and I've even done it myself, where I'm a witness to the person signing the document. Okay? So they just basically ask 30 minutes before closing, but some things may have changed a little bit. You may want to call into the library and ask how to set one of those up. Okay? Now Galileo is a great resource that we have. 100 databases and they index 10,000 different journal articles and provide full text, which is really the big one. This, of course, is more than just doing, let's say, a Google search or a Bing search for some resources. This is actually getting into full, you know, university databases and stuff. Uh, the biggest thing about this is how do I access this? Well, Galileo does require a password. If you call into the library, they'll actually give you what the Galileo current password is because it does change okay now the other resources here by Galileo they have certain sections uh, made for students you can even talk about what grade uh, the student is in and it'll give kind of specific information to that grade level okay so we said things like uh, the Clarks Hill kids <laughs> Uh, galileo.usg.edu forward slash kids forward slash Clarks Hill and then you can actually get in the information there and there's even some full full blown books on there as well so let's talk about some of the pitfalls okay so again I want to reiterate reiterate that many libraries services need to be set up with a username and password beyond your just your ID, username, and password on the gchrl.org website. Uh, try to keep the same one to make it easier to remember. That's a, that's a big one. I would really recommend that. The other thing is um, holds are pulled in the morning. Now, I'm not really sure how what the hold schedule is. I haven't asked librarians of that. Again, if you have any questions, just call into the library uh, and at the library would be happy to help you asking about the holds. But it's a form that you fill out for the uh, curbside holds pickup uh, at gchrl.org. So many sites need to use the gchrl.org as a gateway to log in. Again, I'm going to pull it up a little bit and we'll kind of walk around and as we look at our different stuff that's listed on there. But you basically pull that up, click menu, click one of the some of the options there, and it may ask you to set up a username and password. Just try to keep it the same so it won't be too confusing. And there you go right there. Now I do realize some services, example like ebooks, and I'm happy to say that I'm even seeing where the new Libby uh, ebook audiobook app will tell how many copies of a book are available, and then it also will say It'll say how many the library can actually have, and then it'll say how many if it, the book is available right now. So that's really a big help. Um, I do know RB Digital did not do that, at least that I saw. So a big thing is if you're trying to check out an ebook, an audiobook, or something, and it says it's not available, basically just try again later. Try again in an hour, try again uh, tomorrow, try again next week. And it should become available for you to check it out again, or to, to check it out. Now we're going to talk about RB Digital some, and then we're also going to be talking about uh, the new Libby service as well. So first I'll kind of talk about RB Digital. So let me pull up. So I'll just kind of pull back and forth here. Here's our website, gchrl.org. 
which stands for Greater Clarks Hill Regional Library System. Okay. A little bit later, we'll be talk about Access in Libby. It will ask you what library you're from. You want to type in Greater Clarks Hill, and then you'll see that it pop up in the list. Okay. So if I click here, and then I go to our, where is it? Our, um, let's see. <laughs> That's funny. I even have a thing where I'm looking. There it is. It's our digital library. It'll say books, RB Digital Books. And I may have to log in here. So let me lo get logged in. And we're getting a big thing talking about it moving to Libby. Okay. Okay, so I've logged in to RB Digital. We get this big sign. As of today, they want everybody to start moving over. Okay, Auden eBooks have moved to the Libby app. And I'm going to go ahead and start talking about the rest of the resources for RB Digital. Okay, and then I'm going to start talking about our Libby stuff. So we're going to skip over the audiobook portion of this. So I'm actually going to keep scrolling down here. Let's talk about what other things we can access um, with the RB Digital. Okay, one of the things you can access is the magazines. Okay, magazines usually are available. There's many different copies. You pretty much just click them, and it's a big source of, you know, it's a great it's a great resource here with all the magazines and everything. Uh, one thing that people ask me. Is, um, is is consumer reports on here no consumer reports not on here I actually have a way that you can access consumer reports a different way okay because that's usually the big magazine people ask about basically what you do is you click on the magazine it'll say it's available and it'll say something like check out and then you check it out I don't know why that keeps jumping up like that I'm gonna do it again Okay, no. So basically, it's going to check it out, and then you can actually see uh, the issue. So this is the November issue of this magazine, and if you click all issues here, then you can actually go back uh, further. Okay. And pretty much read it in your favorite device with the the RB Digital app. Okay. Now we're going to skip over ebooks. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Here's our comic books. The comic book section just kind of flip through. Here's like Captain Marvel. Again, you can click check out. It gives a description of the magazine and also, excuse me, of the comic and also details as well. It also talks about the rating as well. Checking it out for 30 days just by clicking there and it'll automatically download it. Okay. Now, the big thing about RB Digital is it's one of the ways that we actually access our, or turn on our subscription to Acorn TV. Okay. And we'll talk about Indie Flicks as well. And it's another, it's a way that we can access the Artist Works and also the Law Depot if we can want to do it that way. It also allows you to, to do to control the, the Quello concerts. Now, they usually do, I think I have to go back to the, the main thing to, to show that. But the big thing, of course, is our Acorn TV that we can access. Basically, you click there. It shows what's available. Click one of these, and it'll actually set up your access with it. It's a lot easier to do it with the app on the phone. Okay. All right. So basically, talked about talked about RB Digital. Like I said, Libby is going to be what we're going to be using now for our ebooks and our audiobooks, but comics, magazines, the artist works, which I'll show that in a little bit too. And again, the big thing is that it actually does not have any subscription uh, fees in any way. Now, what does that mean? That means that all of a sudden, if it does have, um, it doesn't, uh, if something's going to expire, it's okay because it's actually not going to, uh, it doesn't cost anything when something expires. Okay. There, that's a little bit better. 
So do realize that there's no late fee or anything. If some if you does run out, you're just times runs out and it allows someone else to use it unless you check it out again. So this is a big one that I get asked, and this is the same with Libby as well. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and let's start talking about Libby. Now the this is exactly this is basically from our uh, Facebook and gchrl.org website. I'm going to kind of read through it just in case not everybody has seen it before. And I also have some instructions about getting prepared to use Libby. And then we'll go to the Libby website and watch a little video about it, okay? So it actually starts today as of October 1st, 2020. RB Digital eBooks and audiobooks are moving over to Libby. Borrow, borrow and enjoy the same great eBooks and audiobooks you loved in RB Digital. Transition from RB Digital process could take up to 24 hours. I do know that the librarians had posted a message on there about how some people were having um, some problems accessing Libby. Just realize it may be that there's a whole bunch of new people using it today and it may be that you can access your account tomorrow. Okay, I actually was able to log in, uh, set up mine a little bit ago and actually log in. So I'm actually did pretty well. One of the things it did ask me is what is the, um, the login? Do you remember what our website is? What's the website? Uh-huh. It's gchrl.org. So when you search for the library, when it says what library are you, you need to say Greater Clarks Hill Regional Library System. Okay. So then it'll pull up uh, that way. Uh, once the transfer is complete, you'll be able to access ebooks and audiobooks in the Libby app. Okay, this is a big one. Remember, if you currently have a book checked out in RB Digital app, it will be available through the remainder of the lending period so you can finish your title without disruption or risk of losing your place in the book. Your holds will not be transferred to RB Digital and your wish list and checkout history will not be moved to Libby. Um, and that was one of the things that when we did this class earlier uh, this month, uh, we actually did talk about that just realized that uh, on their website they did have another way that you could access that uh, through the rb digital and maybe even write it down if you wanted to okay just so that you know that your what your reading history is or what your ebook history is now we're going to actually venture to overdrive.com uh, forward slash apps forward slash libby in just a second and overlook that a little bit but i know this is a big one that's happening so we want to talk about it a little bit. So let's talk about being prepared for Libby. Okay. A big one is they say is do not rush and purchase a new reader. Devices like Paperwhite are um, reputed. Um, re okay. It's ready for Libby. <laughs> I guess these are misspelled or I'm not familiar with that word. Uh, it is too early to download the Libby app from your app store and install. It's not too early. However, our library will not show um, as available until the transfer has been completed. You will need to search for Greater Clarks Hill Library System. Uh, you don't just search for our Harlem Library. You don't just search for Columbia County Library or Grovetown Library. You need to search for Greater Clarks Hill Library System, okay? If you currently have holds for RB Digital, holds will not be moved to Libby. You will need to place your ebook and or audiobooks on hold again in Libby. If you want to record your RB Digital holds, you can export them. Your transaction history from the RB Digital website, tap My Account, and then Profiles. In addition, your wish list and checkout history will not be moved automatically to Libby. You will be able to re recreate your wish list using tags in Libby and make titles you have already uh, already read using tags in Libby. You can export your transaction history from RB Digital website. Just tap uh, My Account Profiles and it will have that information. Okay. Only ebooks and audiobooks will be moved to Libby at this time. Please continue to use RB Digital and other titles for digital uh, digital content from our library. Uh, we will let you know when they are, they are ready to transfer to Libby. Conclusion, 
Our library is proud to continue to offer you a wide selection of digital titles for you to access anything. I know that um, someone said that, that the library is actually really great because there's actually more audiobooks and more ebooks to be able to act, be accessed, okay? Uh, we appreciate your patience in transitioning to Libby, okay? So let's go ahead and I'm going to pull up that website. Uh, this is the uh, the website that uh, appears at the RV Digital. So if you click that, it's actually going to take us here. Okay. It talks about what is Libby, how do I use Libby, which we just basically covered a lot of this information, what happens to books, and we already talked about that. Okay. But I want to go ahead and go to... And I have to figure out which, where did I have, it? oh, there it is, okay. So let's go ahead and go to our Libby website. So this is actually accessing overdrive.com forward slash apps, okay, forward slash Libby, all right? So this is kind of the Libby app, uh, website. Now, first off, you need to download the new Libby app from the App Store. A big thing is people will say in general, is I want to use uh, that app. Does my device, uh, how can I see if my device was, allows that app or not? Well, the easiest thing to do is you go to that, the program's app, the, the device's app store, and if you don't see that app, it's not going to work, okay? <laughs> um, but uh, this is kind of a very flexible app, so I think it's kind of universal to the same, about the same, I would say, as uh, RB Digital was already using. So, Probably not a reason to have to go buy a new device, okay? So they're kind of showing like a little bit of a video preview over here. Someone using the app kind of quickly. They kind of use the term. I like how she kind of hides behind the book. I guess she's going back to reading. They kind of use the term. Um, uh, what is it? They kind of use the term borrow is what they say. They don't use checkout, they use borrow. Trusted by millions of library patrons across North America and around the world. It's been lots of great articles. Your guide to reading happiness brought to you by your public library and brought, built with overdrive. Warm, personal, and easy to use. Libby is great for users of all ages. Read across devices. All your loans, notes, bookmarks, and reading progress sync across your devices. Listen in your car. Enjoy audiobooks in your car through Apple CarPlay, Android Audio, or Bluetooth, just a Bluetooth connection. And of course, if you have the old school, just the, the, the headphone jack-like thing coming out of your phone and plug it into something, you're all set that way, and of course, using headphones as well. Offline access, download ebooks and audiobooks for online, excuse me, offline reading or stream them to save space. Send to Kindle if you prefer, and I have seen it asked this question. Send to Kindle if you prefer reading on your Kindle. Libby can send your library books to it. Okay. Recommended by PC Magazine, Popular Mechanics, Time Magazine. Browse and Discover, to search and discover. There are thousands of ebooks and audiobooks hand selected for your library, available for reading. Explore the collection through catalog guides, subjects, uh, featured titles, and curated titles. It's a del it's a delight to discover new books uh, through Libby. Okay. Stay the art reading experience. Libby e Libby's ebook reader makes it easy to customize how you read. You can adjust the ebook's front font page, excuse me, font size, book layout, and lighting as you read. You can also add bookmarks, create notes, and highlight and define words. An intuitive and beautiful audiobook player. Libby makes it simple to listen when and where and how you want. Swipe on the book cover to skip backwards or forwards. 
increased playback speed up to 35, um, excuse me, up to three times, uh, set a sleep timer until the end of the chapter or 5, 10, 30 minutes or more. How does Libby work? Okay, so let's see our little video. Meet Libby, the free one-tap reading app from your library. With Libby, you can borrow free ebooks and digital audiobooks from your library. All you need is a library card. Meet Libby, the free one-tap reading app from your library. With Libby, you can borrow free ebooks and digital audiobooks from your library. All you need is a library card. When you open Libby for the first time, she'll help you find your library. Then, you can explore your library's collection and borrow titles or place holds instantly. On your shelf, you'll I will say that Libby did ask me uh, this part here. That's where you would type in the Greater Clarks Hill. Uh, part and then mine actually popped up and said what is your library card number and then I was in no problem Then you can explore your library's collection and borrow titles or place holds instantly On your shelf you'll find all your loans and holds as well as any titles you've tagged Loans are automatically downloaded for offline use when you're on Wi-Fi. If you're using mobile data, you can stream titles until you're on Wi-Fi. Your loans are returned automatically on their due dates, so you never need to worry about late fees. Tap Manage Loan to see more options for each title, like returning early. Tap a title to open it and start reading. If you belong to a library in the United States, you'll see the option to send most eBooks to Kindle or to start reading in Libby. Use the bottom navigation to switch between your shelf, your library, and your current read. In the Libby menu, you can add a library, change your app settings, get help, and more. Download Libby to start borrowing today. Happy reading! Happy reading, how positive. Okay, and that's Libby. So, if you are having some problems, maybe just wait 24 hours. Maybe they're, ha they're trying to access the accounts and transfer everything over. I know the first day of doing something can be very hectic or, or um, quick. But if you're still having problems, contact us at the library um, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Or you can contact us through the Facebook app as well. Meet Libby. That's what people are saying. I love it. Free audiobooks rock. So, here we go. Hello, Libby. Nice to meet you. <laughs> okay. So, any questions about that? Was that helpful? Hopefully that explained or... Um, answered a lot of the questions that you had about using the new app definitely f um, share with friends or family um, there I, I, I know someone that talks about um, yeah it's basically she feels like I need to wear a button that says ask me about free stuff from the library because <laughs> it's like hello how are you do you like audiobooks yep you can get free audiobooks from the library and people go oh my I didn't even know that well there you go right there all right, so let's go ahead and let's start talking about our different, our other, uh, if I can talk, let's start talking about our other stuff we're going to talk about, okay? So first, let's start talking about Acorn TV, okay? Some of the stuff we can access, we'll talk about Indie Flicks a little bit as well, and then Stingray uh, Quillo, and then you can access these things uh, for seven days or more, okay? Now, I'm actually going to pull up.
library here and I may have to sign in so let me drag my stuff over here okay so what you do is you go to the website you click menu you click resources and then go to audio visual and there's uh, Quello concerts there's indie flicks and there's acorn TV so let's click acorn TV now I'm gonna zoom in I know that's probably really small there we go so basically this is acorn TV and I'm actually going to play they have like a little trailer uh, for the service this is a service that does charge uh, monthly and we also talked about this a lot in the uh, the cutting the cord class and now of course we can talk talking about it being free as well how does the free thing work well it's free for seven days and then it expires and you come back to the to the RB digital app and then just re subscribe for another seven days okay it does cost the library money every time that you subscribe so the only thing that we ask is that you use it okay so if you subscribe to it for the seven days use it and enjoy okay so I'm gonna go down here and we're gonna watch our trailer okay which talks about some of the um, movies and TV shows that they have Rule number one, get them laughing. Well, that's basically the holy grail of treasure hunting. Well, no, the holy grail is the holy grail of treasure hunting. Well, you're going to be pedantic. Do you bathe at all? Yes, I do. Well, it's obviously time to step it up. I seem to spend my life searching for patterns. What if there isn't one? done nothing wrong. Why did you just leave? I have come halfway around the world for you. I'm not giving up that easily. Are you interrogating me? Well, of course not. Uh, simply asking the questions that need to be answered in order to find out who killed him and why. figured you out. Well, you've succeeded where so many ex-wives didn't. Are you and I it's all over this, Jack? No question, you were next. This is not a game, mon ami. Tell me the truth and now. It is your only chance. So just a little bit of a trailer for the service. And this kind of shows some of the things that are available uh, on Acorn TV, popular shows, Midsummer Murders, uh, Murdoch Mysteries, which is a lot of fun. It's a Canadian murder mystery show. Uh, Perot, Agatha Christie stuff, and a lot of other information other shows as well. Okay. And like I said, again, that's free through the libraries for seven days. And then when it expires, you just can renew again as many times you want. And uh, there you go. Let's talk about Indie Flicks. Indie Flicks is very similar. Okay. I don't have a trailer for Indie Flicks, so I'll just talk about it and show you some of the stuff that's on there. So a lot of it is independent films from around the world. Okay. A lot of it is in uh, other languages, of course. I think this one's like in South Korean here. I think this is like a Russian movie here. But then if you look at the other movies they have, they have classic movies on there too, like The Magnificent Seven, In the Heat of the Night, The Hustler, The Third Man, Classic TV, Beverly Hillbillies, Bonanza, Dragnet, 
uh, stuff like that. So they have a little bit of something for everybody, and they also have some kind of classic uh, cartoons are on there as well. And you can access that, like I said, free, just like with the Acorn TV. It's a seven-day uh, subscription. So how do we get our free seven-day subscription to our services? The easiest way to do it is basically to log in RB Digital. Uh, the app's really the easiest way to do it. Go to Menu, select Entertainment, uh, select what you want to check out, okay? The show or the movie, and then maybe say Play or Watch, and it'll usually pop up and say, hey, uh, we want to check this out. Now, for your first time, you may have to set up a new password for it. Uh, so the big thing with that is once you have your new pa username and password, then you can actually go to your devices like your Roku. If your smart TV supports this, your Roku, your, um, you know, and uh, uh, the uh, Amazon Fire Stick, the Chromecast, stuff like that. And then that allows you to actually access the stuff on a big TV. Of course, that's another way that you can access it with uh, just a computer as well, or you know, a device, your cell phone. Okay, uh, run the app. It'll ask you what your username and password is, and there you go. You're good to go. All right. So, and of course, feel free to ask any questions if you have. Um, as I kind of kind of run through everything here. So let's talk about universal class a little bit. What exactly is universal class? Well, universal class, and let me pull up. So basically we go to our main library, we click menu, we click resources, oh, excuse me, education and research. And then we actually click where it says continuing education and you'll see Universal Class and Mango, which we'll talk about in a minute, and also Artist Works Music. I'm gonna go ahead, since I mentioned it earlier, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the Artist Works for a minute, okay? And we'll watch our little video. Artist Works for Libraries is brought to you by your local library, bringing instrument, voice, and art instruction to all users of the library. Whether you're a beginner and looking for a beginning access to a new musical instrument, or you're a seasoned player that you want to learn just the latest tricks, all schools are available to you in ArtistWorks for Libraries. You access it through your library site, and you can see an overview video if you would like to see it in action before you get started. You get started by creating an account and logging in with your email and password account that you'd either create or log in with an existing account. And then it'll take you to the Artist Works for Libraries site where all the schools are available to you to log into anytime you want. It'll track your progress as you go along. It allows you to sample different courses and also allows you to join a class and join in right where you are in your progress, whether you're a beginner or an intermediate user. So you select the course that you're interested in and all of your school progress is tracked by school and by lesson. So you easily can pick up where you left off, regardless of whether you're doing it on one computer and then maybe on a mobile device. All the lessons are done in a browser. There's lots of additional learning material in addition to the actual music training classes that are available in ArtistWorks for Library. And there's also art and voice instruction as well. Many courses also have additional study materials that you can get. You access the course that you're looking for and that particular lesson and you select the lesson and it'll open up and play in a video viewer that you can play in your browser, whether you're using a desktop or a mobile device. You play the, the lesson and it'll tell you how long the lesson is at the beginning and you can pause any time. It also has 30 second backup if you would like to do that. The instructor speaks directly into the screen and shows close-ups of the fingering if it's a musical instrument or if it's art it shows you some of the basics of the art. It tracks your progress and allows you to go back and select additional courses throughout the particular class itself so you don't have to follow along one by one. You can jump around as needed. You also can select from different courses. 
If you need additional help, there are some options that you have available to get feedback from the particular instructor. There may be an additional cost for that, however. ArtistWorks for Library is available for you at your local library. Hope you enjoy ArtistWorks for Libraries. Here we go. That's talking about ArtistWorks a little bit. Okay. You basically just click here, get started, and it allows you to have access. It's the same video. ArtistWorks for Libraries offers you the highest quality instructive music and art lessons available online today. These video libraries are recorded by our award-winning and highly acclaimed teaching artists and presented so that learners of all skill levels and experience can progress. We provide detailed lessons in a wide variety of instruments, genres, and mediums. Our lessons cover the fundamentals for those just starting out, intermediate lessons for those slightly more experienced, and advanced lessons for more seasoned learners. You'll also have access to sample video exchanges in each skill level. ArtistWorks for Libraries is a great way to learn music or art on your own schedule from the comfort of your home while having access to today's most sought after teachers. There you go. All right, so let's go ahead Let's talk about our other stuff that we can access. Let's talk about Universal Class. And I'm, I have to log in, so give me one second. This is one of those where you do have to set up a username and password. So it asked me to register. When I first started here, I basically set up the same username and password as I did with uh, the library, so it made it easy to access. Okay, so what exactly is Universal Class? Well, Universal Class is one of those, they have hundreds of different online continuing education classes, okay? Each uh, CEU has a, you can earn continuing education credits, but also certificates uh, with documentation for your continuing education credit. It's got contact hours and course completion hours as well. And it also helps you build your online prof profile and you can share with others that you did complete the course okay so I have a sample of a few here and then we'll kind of jump into looking at it and hopefully we'll watch one of our little introduction videos okay so we first start off with one here that talks about uh, learning HTML um, it says uh, create home pages using HTML5 and it says it's 10 hours long and it's one continuing education credit, okay? The other one that it's receptionist. Now, the reason I chose that one is be kind of, kind of, kind of, and they have some other ones that are basically kind of job user, customer service related. Um, and I kind of imagined, imagine that you were looking for a position somewhere, job somewhere, and basically if there was someone else there that had the same credentials as you, maybe the same background as you, but you had actually had a course in uh, the job that you were looking for. Or maybe you had currently, you know, trying to go back in the workforce, just let them know, I haven't really done this job in a while, but I recently took a course on it uh, to kind of work on my skills and everything. As you see, they have that could give you a big leg up over someone else that hasn't, okay? Especially six hours with the general receptionist, okay? Now, the other one here is we have Excel. Uh, 2019 you may work in a job that wants you to have Word, Excel, or PowerPoint experience but then every year they of course or every year or two they come out with a new version of those programs or some other program and you want to make sure that you have the latest you're up to the latest version of it and know about that okay that could benefit you greatly of course I could even imagine someone in an office saying hey I don't know how to do that in this new version and Someone else saying, yes, I did. I took a course on that, and that could make you um, very important, okay? The other one here, the fourth one that I have is kind of fun. It's soap making, but uh, now even would be a good time to basically start to learn how to start your own home-based business, okay? There's a lot of ho um, hobby things that are listed on there, but things like soap making, um, candle making, even canning and stuff, you could actually turn that into a home-based business and you know use things like Etsy, um, eBay. We have an eBay class that we talk about. And of course, you could sell stuff using 
Facebook Marketplace as well, which we have a class on that too. So let's jump into it and look at our website a little bit. And hopefully we'll, we're going to find one that we think is interesting. We'll watch an introduction video to it. Not all the courses have an introduction video, but let's kind of look around here. So let's go up here and we'll look at our course catalog. It kind of pulls up here. And remember, all this is free through the library. This is a website that does charge, but if you go through the library, it's completely free for us. Now there's accounting, businesses, entrepreneurship, alternative medicine, crafts and hobbies, science, social working, special education, spiritual studies, web design, self-help, test prep. There you go. Could be for you or you're going to become a test prepper for people to ask to help them. Okay, let's go up and look at the computer section. So here's computer training. We have over 50 different programs and up here it's kind of listing some of the latest ones that they have. Cybersecurity, there you go. Anytime you take training for something, do make sure that the software it is, uh, it does cover the latest version of the software. Um, I will tell you that, just kind of a, a note in general. So we have Adobe After Effects, Illustrator, InDesign, Adobe Lightroom. We do have Adobe Photoshop 101. I don't think that has a video. Okay, so we have a video. Let's watch our little video. It is kind of long, so I probably we probably won't watch all of it. Okay, I will turn on the closed captions. images or effects laid on top of other images or effects. So for example, imagine taking five sheets of plastic wrap and painting a small picture on each one and then stacking the sheets on top of each other. The five individual pieces would become one new picture when you stack them together. And that's all that layers are. By using layers, you can add effects to an image, alter an image, or create a new one. Now to view all the layers that you have in a Photoshop image, you'll go over here to the Layers panel. You can see that it's grouped with channels and path, and we have ours selected, so it's currently visible. If you don't see it, go up here to Window and move down to Layers. As you can see, ours has a check mark by it because we already have it open, but if you don't see that check mark, just go ahead and click on it and it will open up the Layers panel. Now by default, you start with what's called the background layer, and this is automatically created for you by Photoshop anytime you open a file. This layer will be created every time you create a new image or document, unless you create a new image with a transparent background. You can see the background layer is locked. This means that you cannot move it, however you can still paint on it or add images to it. Okay, we may move on And as to you can see the one. background layer, like you simply that down to the new layer button. The actual, the course. And it automatically creates a copy so of that. I wanted something that was a little bit more of an overview. But as you can see, let's kind of walk through here and I'll look and see if I can find another um, intro, intro one to kind of show you that's pretty interesting. So first it talks about our course, course description and what it's working on, what you'll be working on, the topics you'll be working on. And it has a full lesson plan broken up into different parts, layers, painting, Photoshop, photo retouching, and so forth. And when you look to the very, very top, it actually said this was a 12 hour average class, okay? Then at the bottom here, it talks about the learning outcomes, okay? And here's the big one. Once you finish the course, you can actually have an official certificate 
uh, documenting course hours and with continuing education credits. Okay, so you either get to view or share your certificate online or download and print as a PDF and each one has its own serial number to verify that it is something you completed yourself. Okay, it's not just just like a random you know piece of paper or whatever. It actually has a serial number of your completion. Okay, so let's go back. Let's keep looking around here a little bit about WordPress, cybersecurity, digital photography. So sometimes when someone says, hey, I enjoyed your class. I want to get a little bit more into digital photography. What should I do? And probably something like this would be a good idea. It'll go much more in depth. And of course, with digital photography, I would probably say go out and take pictures, <laughs> of course. But other things is try to pro start, start a project, work on a project, and you'll know a lot more stuff than you began when, when you began. Okay. So different coding languages. All right, let's go up and look at our crafts and hobbies. Here's one about candle making, cake decorating. There's the soap making. Here's advanced dog training. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. There's a wildlife rehabilitation program. There's bread baking, buying and selling collectible antiques. All right, so let's try this one and see what it's like. Let me put the closed captions on. Starting an antique collection is a simple activity that offers the collector great personal enjoyment for a particular passion and an opportunity for a profit. Collectors often specialize by accumulating items of a specific interest. Antique collectors participate in an ongoing activity known as antiquing. This is a general term that describes the act of searching, shopping, identifying, negotiating, or bargaining for antiques. The word antiquing may also refer to making an object appear older through distressing it or applying an antique paint or finish. For enthusiastic antique collectors, searching for and finding an antique is exhilarating and exciting. What is an antique? The general definition of the word antique is an old collectible item. An antique is collected because of its age, beauty, rarity, condition, or usefulness, the labeling of an item as an antique presumes it has value because of its workmanship and rarity. Other unique features may make an antique both desirable and collectible. For many collectors, there is frequently a personal or emotional connection to an antique item. Items identified as antiques are purchased and acquired for personal use, gifts, and in the case of dealers and brokers, for profit. Collectors perform antiquing at garage sales, estate sales, resort towns, antiques districts, dealer shops, collective cooperatives, and auction houses. Antiquing has grown in popularity. Many people participate in the activity on some level. Just because an item is old does not make it an antique. It is characteristic to define an antique as being at least 100 years old, However, in reality, an object does not need to reach an age of 100 years to be labeled as an antique. One example is an automobile. Many antique autos are far less than 100 years of age. Cars that are 50 years of age or less are typically identified as antique automobiles.
Some states permit vehicles manufactured more than 25 years prior to the current year to be registered as antique as long as they have been maintained in or restored to a condition that is substantially in conformance with manufacturer specifications. Other vehicles are often considered antiques, such as earlier motorcycles and trucks. An antique is an object that represents a previous era or time in human society. In contrast, today's collectibles are the possible antiques of the future. While antiques are often more than 100 years of age, collectibles are usually less than 100 years old. Of course, most antiques are collectibles. The terms are sometimes used interchangeably. Some government regulations, rules, or laws reinforce the 100-year age reference. The U.S. Customs defines anything over 100 years old as an antique, which means it can be imported into the United States without any tax assessment. Because of these statutes, the 100-year age is often cited as the legal definition of an object or piece's classification as an antique. Other important terms associated with antiques are 1. Antiquity this alternative term commonly refers to the remains of ancient art and everyday items, which themselves are often archaeological artifacts. These are items often on display in museums. 2. Antediluvian This term describes items that are very old, old-fashioned, out-of-date, antiquated, or primitive. It is also used to describe the period before the biblical flood of Noah. Antiquarian the term refers to a person interested in antiques or things of the past. Antiques are commonly objects that illustrate some degree of true artisanship or a certain attention to design or functionality. Sometimes antiques become family heirlooms, being passed down as a part of an estate. Antiques are often bought, sold, or traded at specialized antique and collectible shops. Some valuable antiques can be bought from antique dealers, auction services, or purchased online through websites and online auctions. Collectors locate and purchase antiques at yard sales, tag sales, auctions, antique shows, and flea markets. They also actively scan classified ads, looking for that next item or find that can be added to their collection. Getting Started Some people find the idea of starting an antique collection to be an overwhelming and daunting task. It is not. There are literally thousands of things to collect. Many new collectors find it hard to choose what collection to begin with. It is easy to start collecting. Most new collectors begin by studying collections, talking to dealers, and browsing antique stores. Something piques their interest, and they begin building their collection. Some become engrossed with their newfound passion and build a large, expansive collection. Likewise, people are sometimes afraid to explore collecting antiques. They believe antiquing is an expensive and time-consuming hobby. Some antiques, however, are not as expensive as similar present-day items. For example, an antique shelf might cost less than a new shelf constructed of similar wood and quality. Some things cost more than others, and finances will often determine what is and what is not collected. New collectors are also reluctant to start a collection, afraid of the many unscrupulous individuals actively selling questionable items. There is a good chance that a budding hobbyist might become discouraged after having bought a fake antique or a reproduction for an inflated price. Others often start collecting collectibles rather than antiques for the following reason. 1. Collectibles may be less expensive. 2. They are more readily available. 3. The collector has an emotional attachment to the acquired objects. Collectibles vary in value and type. There are thousands of categories of collectible items. For example, these are items that are acquired as collectibles. 1. Movie memorabilia. 2. Beer cans. 3. Knives. 4. Lunch boxes. 5. Toys. 6. Baseball cards. 7. Autographs. 8. Phonograph records. Some items can be classified as both collectibles and antiques. Tools, for example, might be collectibles, but if old enough, could be rightfully described as antiques. Some collections are started because they are inexpensive to begin, such as penny or nickel collections. 
These general definitions allow people to make a distinction between genuine antique pieces. Well, that was pretty interesting. See, so the introduction to some of these videos, you can actually just learn a lot just by watching those. So, like I said, um, you can actually jump in. You could finish the course if you want to. Another thing you could do is you could actually jump into the different lessons if there's just like one topic you wanted to learn about. So maybe there's a big one there like detecting fakes or something like the video discussed and find out what the difference between collectibles and just plain old plain stuff. <laughs> just plain old stuff, excuse me. But anyway, so that's Universal Class. It's a fantastic resource. A lot of great stuff on there. And just wanted to let more know, more uh, more people know about it. It's really kind of our big uh, thing to kind of talk about that. So wanted to learn coding or anything like that. Wanted a place to start. Wanted to be able to get a certificate to be able to show someone that you did complete the course. It's a good idea, good place to start. Okay, so let's talk about Mango a little bit. Mango is a continuing education app and it basically teaches you other languages, okay? It does have a app component that's available as well. Again, it's one of those where you go to gchrl.org, click through, continue education, Mango, you'll set up a username and password and then you can actually use the, the app to be able to do it as well. This also is a great English as a second language program because they do have that also. What is BrainFuse? BrainFuse is our newer um, service. You can actually get live tutoring. Uh, you can go to their website. The tu live tutoring uh, times do, do change. So you definitely need to check out their website for that. But they have writing labs that'll help you. You can submit things for them to basically review, give you other ideas on how to say something better. They also have some virtual classrooms uh, that you can uh, meet in as well. Okay, kind of like a, a diff, their own version of Zoom and also setting up and creating your own flashcards to help you learn whatever subject you've been working on. Um, so that's some other things we'll talk about as we kind of wrap stuff up here. Little known GCHRL resources. Uh, some of the big things are the Gusta Chronicle. The Gusta Chronicle is available uh, all the way back to 1994 right now. Currently, they may have expanded that a little bit more without pictures, but right now, if you want images for the paper, it's back to 2017 as well. Consumer Reports one is available. Let me show you where that is. So let me pull that up real quick. There's a Heritage Quest, Genealogy. Hold on, let's see. Okay, so you do home, you say digital library, wait, where is that? Resources, digital library, and you say newspapers and periodicals, and there's Consumer Reports, okay? Right next to the RB Digital Magazines and also the Augusta Chronicle Collection as well, okay? Uh, Merchant Intelligent is available, okay. Research over 70 million U.S. Uh, private businesses. We also have Gale, which has some great reference books as well. Digital Library, click reference books. Whoop. Oh, it's over here. 
that over there. Sorry. Digital library. Books. And you say, hang on, I'm in the wrong place. Is that it? Yeah, there it is. Reference books. The Gale service. And they have lots of um, travel books on there as well. And you can print some of the pages. Okay. County information still is on our website, gchrl.org. And currently, we're not really having any big events or anything. Just kind of check, check the front page uh, website for events and planning and everything as well. Okay. So that kind of kind of does it for me. So we kind of come to the end of our class here. <laughs> we talked a lot about Libby, didn't we? So we learned a lot about Libby. Definitely feel free if you have any questions to ask questions on the library Facebook app. And of course, call into the library Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. to help answer any questions that you have about Libby or the new service as well. Here's some reference guides as well. Um, remember, there's lots of information on there, but you still should probably go to gchrl.org and then click the link to go to these services. Some of them you may require you to use a, a username and password to log in or set that up. But there's also pamphlets at the, down, at the Columbia County Library in Evans. There's some pamphlets downstairs that you can take that'll explain a lot of these services. Of course, you can ask our uh, reference librarians anything about this, about the um, accessing this. So that kind of does it for our class this afternoon. We'll be posting our new schedule for next week. Uh, our next month, we'll be posting that uh, starting next week and everything. We're we'll going to have some spooky classes, so get ready for that. Just again, a little side note that our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside Holds Pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org and just click the link that says Curbside Holds Pickup for details. And I think the librarians have basically asked to make sure that you have a really good uh, callback number on there uh, in case they're trying to get a hold of you to try to set stuff up or ask a question, okay? Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Help us with our subscribe drive. Our subscribe drive, trying to get 100 people to subscribe to our YouTube channel so we can get our own personalized YouTube address. Or search YouTube for GCHRL. Um, excuse me, GCHRL videos, and it should pop right up. So thank you again for joining me today. Hope you learned something new and good luck. And uh, with the Libby app and everything, access some, some new audio books and stuff. So it's very exciting to have some new content that I'll be able to read and download and listen to and everything. Um, like I said, I'll see everybody again on Tuesday with our new classes for October. It's pretty outside. Go outside a little bit, uh, be refreshed, and also stay safe as well. So until I see you next time, have a great day and bye-bye. Bye-bye.